The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in Noah's day, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. For in those days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, taking wives, taking husbands, right up to the day Noah went into the ark, and they suspected nothing till the flood came and swept all away. It'll be like this when the Son of Man comes. Then two men in the fields, one is taken, one left. Of two women at the millstone grinding, one is taken, one left. So stay awake, because you do not know the day when the Master is coming. You may be quite sure of this, that if the householder had known at what time of night the burglar would come, he would have stayed awake and would not have allowed anyone to break through the wall of his house. Therefore you too must stand ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Did you see on the news the, uh, during the week, they kept playing it and playing it and playing it, the service station man who saw the thief coming in the car and just belted him with lollies. <laughs> he was awake, wasn't he? He was awake. He was awake. Uh, it's a good, e- good example of the gospel today with our spiritual life. Uh, so lollies will do if that's all you got. <laughs> uh, today is the first Sunday of Advent. You notice I'm in purple? Yes, Father. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, that you meant to notice that I'm in purple so that you'll know it's a different season of the church. And just to say the purple, the purple is confusing uh, pedagogically. That means as a teacher, I like a big word once a year. It's the new year, so I'll throw it in. We've got no more big words for the rest of the year. But, but it's confusing because we wear purple in Lent and purple in Lent is a sign of penance. But purple in Advent is not a sign of penance. Right? Purple in Advent is a sign of preparing for the celebration of the king. Kings wore purple. All right? No one else could afford purple. You know, there's there's stories about the uh, uh, the woman that was made purple garments in somewhere in the epistle somewhere. What was the name? Lydia or something? Was it? And and, uh, purple was something only worn by kings. Um, One day when I've got time and you've got time, I'll tell you about how they made purple uh, and it only came from a seashell, an urchin that lived in the water around Lebanon and one little place and and it took hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of seashells to make one little cloth of purple. It was very expensive till about the Seven, late 1700s, 1800s, some chemists found out how to make it for nothing and everybody wears purple now. But at the time of Jesus, you know, they put the purple garment on him on the cross. There's so many references to it in the Bible. You've got to understand it was a precious, very special garment. So in Advent, it doesn't mean penance. I got confused about that a lot growing up. So it's, we're celebrating the coming of the king. And the church celebrates. One of the, one of the young people in the, in the, co- the community uh, challenged me last Sunday about when do you, does Easter start and when does this start and how, why is Christmas on this day? And, and uh, so, so just to tell you about Advent, Advent has four Sundays. So that means it can vary between 21 days and 28 days. Because Christmas, you listen to this very seriously because it's information you've been dying to know. Christmas Day this year is on a Sunday, so consequently Advent will be the longest it could possibly be. It'll be the full 28 days because it starts on a Sunday and it must have four Sundays in it and it'll go right through. Next year, Consolation will be the shortest it could ever be because Christmas Day is on a Monday. Do you understand that? No, yeah, of course you don't. All right, but I was asked that question last week by one of the younger people and I felt I should be able to answer it properly. Um, and I'm glad they asked me the question. The other thing about it in the liturgy, the church spreads the four Sundays each year, A, B or C, it doesn't matter, And I like to educate you in liturgy. I really do because that's the prayer life of the church. 
And the liturgy of the church says Advent one Sunday is to proclaim the, the thousands of years that the people of God waited for the coming of the Saviour and to listen to the prophets. And this year in year A, we're going to listen to Isaiah. We started Isaiah today, chapter 2. And the next three Sundays, we will do the Isaiah, the whole book of Isaiah, bits and pieces of it, and to study the prophecies of Isaiah about the coming of the Lord. You know, you know the text so well. You had a whole week's uh, conference on the, the text that in the days to come, the mountain of the temple of the Lord will be tower above the other mountains and be lifted higher than the hills, and all the nations will stream to it. Isaiah is writing in a time of, of, of not only persecution, but they've been, been pushed right out of Jerusalem. They're down in the captivity in Babylon. They've got no hope. They see no future. They've lost their temple. They've lost their priests. They've lost their worship. There's what can they do and what hope is there. And Isaiah brings hope to the community. He said, in the days to come, the mountain of the temple of the Lord will tower above all the mountains. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways. So Isaiah taught his people to wait upon the Lord. So the second reading today, it combines with the gospel, which is unusual in the liturgy, and we'll find that in Advent. And we read from Romans, wasn't it, that uh, stay awake, the call, stay awake, like the guy in the service station, you know? He was awake with the bag of lollies. Be awake, stay awake, because you don't know the time or the hour. And Jesus then in, takes up that theme in uh, Matthew's Gospel. Again, this year we're going to read from Matthew. It's, it's interesting that we start at Matthew 24. We start at the end of Matthew rather than at the beginning. But we'll get to the beginning of Matthew when it comes to the birth of Jesus and to announcing Matthew's community's reason for, for... And it's a beautiful gospel. Matthew was the tax collector. Yes, Father. Remember? Matthew was one of the 12 apostles. Yes, Father. Most of the evangelists weren't. And he was the one that his community was listened to firsthand to what Jesus taught Matthew and what he was able to give to his people. He says, as it was in Noah's day, so will it be when the Son of Man comes. The Son of Man. Uh, th that's Jesus' favourite expression for himself. When Jesus talks about himself, he talks about himself as the Son of Man. There have been books written about it, what it means, right? And I haven't read fraction of the books but it's from Daniel that the son of man will come you know and they knew there's Matthew's people knew their Bible Matthew was Jewish he was a Jewish tax collector yes father we remember all right so Matthew knew his Bible yes father we remember so so uh, just stressing a million things it's it it just man a common person in Daniel. But it comes to mean more than that when Jesus applies himself. Jesus didn't call himself son of God. He, didn't, he called himself son of man. But he took the phrase from the scripture and the context of Daniel. When the son of man comes, in those days, you know, the, before the flood, people were eating and drinking and taking husbands and wives. And the Son of Man will come on a day that you least expect. So stay awake because you don't know when the Master is coming. The new year starts in the church with proclaiming the cross. It doesn't start with proclaiming the birth of Jesus. The birth of Jesus we're going to proclaim in, in four weeks' time. In this great season of celebration and preparation... Uh, we look for the light. You see the candle that we have lit for the four weeks, the four Sundays, it has four purple Sundays, four, and then the pink one for Christmas, the white one for Christmas night, and, and uh, when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. So I try to do a thousand things, and I think the come back to the start, 
the guy in the service station with the pack of lollies <laughs> says it all. You know, says it all. Stay awake. And if you stay awake, uh, Jesus said, uh, you may be quite sure that if the household had known what time of night the burglar would come, he would have stayed awake and would not have allowed anyone to break through the wall of his house. That's true, isn't it? You'd all give up a night's sleep to save your house getting robbed if you knew for sure that it was going to be robbed. Therefore, you too must stand ready because the Son of Man, that's Jesus, the Son of Man is coming in an hour that you, that you do not expect. So, be ready. Happy New Year.